All right. Um, now it's it's very important to note the formats in which data can be saved. For Excel file is dot x n x uh, x, and then for CSV file, which is command separated value file, is the CSV. That's the extension, so it allows data to be saved in tabular format. And we also have XQL file for communicating with XQL uh, database. Now we're going to look at how to import the CSV file. We've worked with Excel file. The process is still the same, just a slight uh, change in what we already know. Okay. Okay. Um, we could go over to import a CSV file, okay, or any other file. Now, if it's a CSV file, all we need to do is to just effect these changes. So, what's going to be here is CSV. So, meaning that you saved your work not as a spreadsheet, but as a CSV, not as an Excel file, but a CSV. Then you need to change this as well to CSV, okay. And this as well to CSV. Now, what does this mean? This means that the data you have in your in your um, in your Google Drive must actually be a CSV file for this to work. But if you know it's not a CSV file, then you don't need it. It's just to pull up a CSV file if it were to be a CSV file that you are working with. Next, we're going to look at how we identify. Uh, empty columns in a given data. How we identify empty columns in a given data. Now we use the df is equals to df dot is norm. Okay, that sum. So I'll go over to put this, putting this in our in our coding environment. I'll have to change this to Excel format. Okay. Excel. This is Excel. Okay, because we are actually working with Excel. So to to check for how many missing values that we have, we use this, which is df dot is not. So when we run it through, we'd have details. So for where we have retailer, we have two missing values. On that region, we have one. On that invoice date, we have one. You see, it listed out everything. You know, it listed out every number of missing value in our data set and gave some more uh, details. Now, I also want us to take note that the DF that shape, right, would give information on shape, right, number of rows and uh, column in the data. That's the function okay okay uh, if we could still look at it and see what it's going to do we see here that uh, when we run the code you know it gives us that this data has gives us the shape which is 10 by 14 right 10 by 14 okay, i think 10 rows and 14 columns or vice versa but it's, uh, when we check okay we could just confirm it says 10 by 14 right let's confirm to be sure of what it's talking about. Yes, so uh, that's uh, how many well, we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nineteen. Well, definitely that's fourteen column, right? And ten rows. Okay, that's the info. Fourteen column and ten rows. So the the df uh, equals to df that shape gives us the information okay that's what gives us that um, information so we have 10 rows and 14 column the data the next thing we're going to look at is applying functions to a data frame applying functions to a data frame how do we do that we use this okay we could use the uh, lambda function in this case to create something okay let's see what we can do in that R sample data set so looking at the uh, uh, the details or like what we have in the data we have 
Now to apply formula or to use formula, I just created a simple one here now. Now mind you, we have the column where uh, here, which is price per unit, right? I could do some kind of mathematical manipulation here. Let's assume I want all of these values to be multiplied by two, and all of them should be uh, listed out in a new um, in a new column. So I'll specify the column using the DF. So I'll say uh, DF, okay, square bracket, the new column. It's going to be in quotes. I call it unit increment, and the column that I want to alter here is price per unit. Now I'll use the lambda function. I want to multiply each of the individual items there by two. Okay, so when I run this, we'll find a new column printed out already. All right. So now I'll take a look at it. We're going to have a new column called unit increment. Now what do we have in unit increment? All of these that we have in uh, price per unit is multiplied by two. Okay, so we have uh, price per unit fifty here multiplied by two. Okay, we have fifty again multiplied by two, and so and so on. Okay, all right. Let's go to the next. Now let's look at uh, visualization with Python data visualization. Uh, data visualization is a process of representing uh, um, visual elements like chart graphs and maps. It helps in understanding patterns, trends, and insights from data, making complex information more accessible. Okay, now I would like to end this lesson here. In our next class, we'll focus more on this topic, which is uh, data uh, visualization. Thank you. Bye for now.